nigga like me, man. Oh, uh, yeah. I love the game. I love the game. I love the hustle. When well, y'all hear that, y'all already know what time it is. You, know, a nigga got a nigga could you just leave. tuned in to the most exclusive podcast. Mogul moves only. Hey, I need a meal a day. And I got my I got guy in the building. Turn that down. What up, 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 though? I got my guy in the building. Man, welcome to Mogul Moves Only Podcast with your boy Big D, the mogul, a.k.a. Shook Diddy, a.k.a. Illuminati Jack. And I got the guy, the guy in the building, Rufus, man. What's up, bro? It's been a long time, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Man, very long time. It's a reunion. It's a reunion. That's why I had to wear the sweater. Hey, man, way to represent, man. Bowling Green. And uh, we should have did the fight song, bro. They sang seeing Isaac Zumba or something for people yeah. don't know, man. They, they weren't going to be ready. They weren't ready, man. They wasn't going to be so, ready. So, hey, bro, so I know this guy, man, on college campus, man, making major moves, see you out here in the streets, man, doing your thing, got the clothing brand popping, got the clubs popping, man. Give a, For those who don't know, man, tell them a little bit about the name of your, your brand, man, and what you got going on right now. Uh, we got a very small, small clothing line, man. It's, uh, it's called Humble Flourish Brand. Just a couple of my friends that uh, went to college uh, with us. We okay. decided to come out with a clothing line because we weren't doing shit else, and we was uh, we was trying to get some hoes. So uh, we was just like, did it work? It, it kind of did. It kind of okay. did. But kind of everybody started being in a relationship, so I don't okay. know how that worked out for everybody else. Uh, but yeah, we just we started uh, we started with one T-shirt, and um, I was actually apprehensive about it. And one of my friends told me he was like, I mean, all it takes is like two hundred fifty dollars to start it. So he was like, nigga, we spend that uh, every weekend in the club drinking. So why not? So how did y'all come up with the name Humble Flourish Brand? Like, um, we would always say flourish, like when we would go out of town, yeah. and if like if I seen you talking to a, a cute ass chick, we'd be like, "Hey, my nigga, that was flourish." Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So we would always say it amongst ourselves. And uh, one day, uh, I think you might know Keith. He was a cafe yeah. BG. Yeah. So he was like, "Hey, B," and you know me, we, we were roommates during college. And so he was like, "Hey, B, I got a, a design, a shirt design, because you know he did graphic design." And I was like, oh, "Okay, well, just show it to me." And so he showed me the shirt. It just literally had nothing on it but flourish. And I was like, nigga, that's hard. We got to get them hoes made and wear them hoes when we go out of town because we do this thing called Real Nigga Weekend. Okay. Where all the um, niggas from BG, we link up and we will go to D.C. with our other uh, homies out there. Uh, I think you might know Nick Matthews. Yep. Uh, so we would go out there and he was going to Howard Law. So we would go out there because we was trying to figure out, all right, how can we talk to more bitches so we can get these shirts made? They're going to be like, oh, wow, y'all niggas, y'all, y'all, you know, a rap group or something? Yeah, bitch, we are, you know? <laughs> So that's how it kind of started. And then um, at the same time, I had just started party promoting with, with Crown Holders. And uh, we I, I initially did it the same day we started doing this one place called Kush on Lord Greenville, which is, uh, yeah, if you've been in Dallas for a while, Kush is pretty epic. Yep. Um, so I started doing it that same day. And, uh, man, we flipped. We probably, I probably sold like 15 of those 25 shirts. And shit, the rest is history. Man, I see the shirts like popping up everywhere. Man is very pro African, pro black, very Afrocentric. And that actually happened by mistake. Like I don't think we were trying to be like, oh yeah, let's make a whole bunch of uh black shit. But then it just all of us are like kind of conscious, so we just were like, oh, I kind of like that, or I like this, or I want something to rep the culture, but I want to look fly as fuck while I do it. So that's dope. So I see y'all. Yeah, got the shirt with Malcolm X. Yeah, that's yeah. That's dope, but not one with Martin Luther King. No, nah, we don't. We don't have one. It's the I mean, what is it about Dr. King that he can't get on a T-shirt? Because nobody put Dr. King on the T-shirt. Um, I don't. I think Dr. King doesn't look aesthetically pleasing on the shirt. It's the mustache. I th- yeah, I, I, I don't think that. Um, uh, you know, and blame Dr. King. I don't think he said or looked the way you want to see him on the shirt. But he looks good when you listen to him or something like that. Though, but. would you put Bill Cosby on the shirt? No, nah, we probably not gonna rock out with Bill on the shirt. Damn man, yeah, but yo, yo your pieces is dope. I've been trying to get some shirts for a minute. I mean, it's just the whole the because I like that clean, like simple look. Yeah. And y'all got y'all got the one. I think it just says flourish across the top. 
I mean, mm-hmm. in front of it, that yeah. was dope. But then when y'all dropped that's that, like our signature design, the one with the gold. Yeah, mm-hmm. that won't rock. But then y'all dropped that. It almost remind me when Martin come on the make floor. What is it? The make, make melon and flourish again. Damn, new joints dope. I need a couple of those, man. So for right now, people watching, where can they go get the shirts? Um, they can go to www.humbleflourishbrand.com. Um, you can uh, you can actually uh, type in. Uh, shipping, the free shipping code is shipping. So I'll give you a discount off on the shipping. Let me pay for that so it can get to you. Um, and yeah, you know, fuck with us. Okay. So I'm going to go into the segment, man. I call this pretty much wh- who would you rather, or I'm going to give you two scenarios. You pick which one is the best and why. Okay. Who is the better all around entertainer? Singer, dancer, Michael Jackson, or Chris Brown? We was having this debate. That's fucked up. Michael Jackson or Chris Brown? That's fucked up. I mean, you kind of... It's really like an a unfair question. I mean, it got to be Michael Jackson because Chris Brown derived everything he is from Michael Jackson. It's like the Kobe, Michael Jordan work, argument. Because, I mean, if that's the case, then Michael Jackson got everything he got from James Brown. A little bit, but, I mean, everybody going to put something new on it. Like, Chris put something new on it because he going to add a little hip-hop to it. You take Michael Jackson at his prime in dancing, going against Chris Brown at his prime in dancing, and you say battle it right now, who win it? I mean, but but Mike was cold though, because you got to think about the setup of Mike videos. Remember, Michael? I mean, Mike Jackson and MC Hammer used to have like uh, video off, so one person would have like a ten minute video, and the other person would have a thirty minute. Like they were really they videos were were like epic shit though. You know what I'm saying? But Michael Jackson never slid on his elbow like Chris Brown did. I mean, but you but you can say he never did that, but he inspired the elbow slide. I'm gonna have to dis bro. I and then like- I mean Chris Brown not doing that that little shit, that smooth criminal shit. Nobody nigga, you don't know how to do that. With the little lean thing? Yeah, nigga. Bro, I've been doing that since eighty seven. Nigga. I used to do that all the time at the Bowling Green party. Bro, you're not you not doing that, bro. That that shit is classy. Bro. Like nobody can do that. I'm still trying to figure out how Michael Jackson did that shit. Bro, it was camera tricks, man. Michael Jackson. Okay, so then the next part. Who sing better? You get him to blow toe for toe, sing off battle, Michael Jackson or Chris Brown. I mean, you gotta go Michael Jackson there. What? Him and Jenny Jackson be Whispering in the microphone. <laughs> nah, <laughs> bro. My guy hits, bro. But but he ain't got vocals. I'm saying singing. He I, finessing. He uh, be going. And he finessing the track. He get a crazy beat, and he sing minimal like smooth criminal. Nobody know the words. I mean, do song. you just do you really just like Chris Brown? I just feel like he's a better entertainer than Michael Jackson. I see. If I see. Because I feel like it. you're very disrespectful to to to, uh, to Michael Jackson. Bro, I'm just saying. Michael Jackson, Jackson do deserve all the credit that he, he gets as a pioneer and what he's done is an amazing entertainer. But I'm talking about when it comes down to just straight skills. Nah, I mean, because you're going to eat Michael Jackson ass up. I mean, you got to think, like, Michael Jackson been really, he been really having, like, number one hits since he was a kid, bro. Like, But they stole him. They stole him. Quincy Jones aired him out. He, he put Michael Jackson on blast like a month ago and said, Michael Jackson be stealing people's songs. I don't give a fuck about that. Chris Brown don't steal songs. <laughs> oh, okay. Chris Brown got like 15 remixes of songs on his uh on his CD. That's cool. I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm okay with that. He had to make them better. I oh, feel like it's my God. Chris Brown. Nigga, next Omarion. question. Next question. I'm not about to do Chris this. Chris Brown, with you. Omarion, I'm not about to do this. Then Michael Jackson when it comes to the dance. Oh, Mario? Are you serious? Man, I take it back. Chris Brown, Usher, Michael Jackson, then Omarion. Michael Jackson was decent. He was just hyped up. You know what I'm saying? It's just like Kanye when you. I mean, over. Usher's cool, but if it's not, I mean, if he's not cheating on nobody or having a baby by nobody, I don't really give a fuck what Usher doing. I feel you. Usher got it bad right now. Here we yeah. go. Next question. Who's the best basketball player? Here you go with this shit. I'm gonna put. Th- I'm gonna put. I put two. But I'm gonna put three. LeBron, Mike, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Uh, you gotta go, Mike. Hell no. Hell no. Bro, you think, you, think, basketball, bro. you think LeBron is better? Way better. Than Michael Jordan? Yes. Bro, Le- Le- LeBron is great. I, I mean, it's 48 minutes in the game, right? I guess. Right. It's 48 minutes, right? 
LeBron is the best player for 46 of those minutes. Okay. The last two minutes, that, that man is horrible. I disagree. I mean, it is what it what is. What makes Michael Jordan better than LeBron? I mean, he's just his will to win, his shot selection, the way he took over a game. Uh, and I, I mean, it's just it's, it's his ability to put the team on his back and do whatever he has to do to win. Well, so what you just said is – that's well, LeBron. That was, that that's was LeBron just, for the first forty-six minutes of the game. But just, the end of the game, Le- LeBron just he has a he shoots horrible shots at the end of the game. Because basketball is all about shot selection. You play football. I know you yeah. might not be familiar with this, so you know what I'm saying. That it's really about shot selection. I feel like this, bro. I think all the attributes. And, and, just, Le- and LeBron has he has the most holes in his game for somebody that has been in, in the league as long as he has. Like, there's no reason he doesn't have a way better post-up game than he does. His post-up game is trash. I'm just saying, bro. Michael Jordan, all, all the attributes you just made of Michael Jordan just signify he's just a ball goal, ball hog. And that's, that's cool. That's it. That's it. He's not a better player. He just takes more shots. Now, if you want to say the best all-around player, i give that to LeBron. I think he is the best all-around player. So, to win a championship, who has the most impact on the team of winning a championship? If you take – a losing franchise that haven't seen anything, and you had a choice between putting Michael Jordan at his prime and LeBron James at his prime, who would you pick up? I'm picking up Jordan every day of the week. No. No. LeBron, LeBron going to get to the finals against Jordan, and he going to kill. He, they going to go no, 4-0. See, I feel like Jordan definitely is a scorer. If he – maybe contradicting, but he, he got all the parts around him to help him win. I don't feel – I feel like Michael Jordan and Tom Brady are the same people. I think they're they're great within the system. You remove them from that system and you put them with a team a team that don't have those those pieces. They don't become an immediate championship contending team. I feel like I mean, but you could say you could literally say that same thing for LeBron. If you put him in a system, will he be actually able to to do those same things that he does? Cuz I mean, to LeBron's credit, he's never he's never gotten coached up on like a a Hall of Fame caliber coach. That's true. So yeah. we, we've never – I mean, you could say that you've actually never seen the best LeBron, for real. But I feel like that's that's what makes him even better. Like Tom Brady – I feel like he, he has a potential. Brady? He has a potential to be better than Jordan. He has all the tools. Now, he does have all the tools, but is he better? Has he shown it to this point? Nah. I think LeBron will go down as the greatest basketball player alive until, I guess, it, he's – Mike. I mean, flat out, LeBron's better than Jordan, bro. And I just feel like, again, nah, he, by him not having a championship hey, nah, coach. LeBron, they want to see Jordan at, at that prime, bro. I'm saying by him not having a championship, I mean, a, a Hall of Fame caliber coach, and, and not even a lot of Hall of Fame caliber players around him and still being able to achieve what he done. I mean, Cleveland Brown has been for yeah. I mean, Cleveland Brown. Cleveland Cavaliers has been a forgotten, forgotten about franchise that he resurrected from the dead twice. Jordan can't rec- resurrect. How old is uh, how old is Jordan when he retired the second time? Like 55? 40. 40. LeBron, okay, he's 33. I feel like even at the, the pace that LeBron is, you could take LeBron somewhere at 37 years old and he'll still have the same pa- impact. Jordan didn't have that impact when he went to the Wizards. So now you're judging it off 37-year-olds? Yes. Okay. I'm judging it off of everything. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, man. man, next question, bro, because obviously – you don't know basketball. I, I mean, Jesus Christ. This is this is yeah, yeah, this is horrible. Here we go. Kevin Hart or Eddie Murphy. That's easy. Why? That's Eddie Murphy. Why Eddie Murphy? Have you seen Raw? Yes, I have. I mean, have you seen him play all the people in Nutty Professor? I have. Cletus. Like, I mean, have, have you seen these things? Okay, you know what? I can't I can't argue with you on that one. I mean, that's all I'm like, damn, have you all you had to do was see Raw and you'll understand, like, Eddie Murphy's hilarious. Okay, so we're going to put you on blast on this one because I caught some heat with this question. Who is better, 8-Ball, MJG, or UGK? I mean, you know I'm biased because I'm from Memphis. So who's better? I would say 8-Ball and MJG. By how much? Uh, Not by a significant margin, but I would give them just a slight edge just because of the hometown. Because people got mad at me because I put Ray Schremer before UGK. Wow. On God. On God. Do you agree? I, 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 but look, nothing against you, GK. I think they straight. I think like if you had a nice barbecue, I should have brought some Hennessy in here for this. Shit. Hey, we got well, we got some Siraga. So I, I feel like if you had a nice barbecue, 
in the back in the backyard with your uncle. Just go to the next question. UGK like you being good, somebody bro. that's doing music, you shouldn't say these things. These I'm are blasphemy, saying, bro. Ray but you are from hard. up north, though, so it don't it don't resonate with you. But if I had to pick be twenty two, a bar MJG. Up, you know, you up north niggas, y'all be different, bro. I'm Midwest, bro. That's up north, but <laughs> all the up north niggas too. They act like they not from up north. You be like, yeah, you from up north, right? Up north nah, is Canada. Midwest, nigga. You know, I got that Midwest. Like, okay, up north nigga. is Canada. Okay. Here we go. Which one would you? Which place would you rather live in, Zamunda or Wakanda, and why? Uh, Wakanda for the technological advances. You don't feel like Zamunda would advance? I don't. They didn't have vibranium. That's true. That vibranium was dope. So the only thing that Zamunda had, they had Babar. Yeah. They had Babar. They had them hoes, too. Yeah, they had some hoes. But I mean. I don't think you've seen too many. I mean, they had the ball head joints in Wakanda. If I stay, if I stay in Wakanda and I got the vibranium, I'm always going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm always going to be rich. And so I can fly the hoes in from Zamunda. So what you what do you think about that movie? Did you uh, Obviously, you saw it. I thought it was um, quite orgasmic, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's a strong word. Yeah, I thought it was very orgasmic. Like shaking and fall asleep orgasmic. It was like, uh, that was good. No, nah, it was like was what I thought it was orgasmic. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So, Killmonger, is he dead, or does he come back in the next movie? Nah, that nigga out of there. I just this is my thing. The white dude got shot, and his spine got destroyed. And they brought him back from the brink of death. Right. But remember, at the end, Killmonger said that he wanted to die. He said, I want you to throw my body in the ashes with all my dead ancestors. I'm out here, you, but you think they got cool. They had a bonding moment. Now you got two Black Panthers. This dude going to die. All this technology you got, he going to die from a knife wound? Yeah, I'm I'm a definitely. Nigga, you tried to take my spot, nigga. But it's you, time for you to go. Bro, his feelings was hurt, though. Nah, fuck that. It's better ways. You got to get counseling. That's what I'm saying. I like, think that's what Black Panther 2 is going to be about. Nah. <laughs> Killmonger goes to see Iona fix my life. Nah, we good on him. Is that, I think that's her name. I thought that movie was real dope. I think, I wish I had one of your t-shirts at that movie, bro, so I could have represented. You should have told me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was just mean mugging white people. Hey, that's what our shirts do. People love our shirts for yeah. that. If you want to feel some kind of way around white people without saying anything, just get you one of our shirts. Like, the Malcolm X shirt is great for that. Um, the melon, the make melon shirt is always great because a lot of white people always think it's Melania Trump, so they're like, "Oh my God, what's that?" <laughs> I'm, I'm like, it ain't what you think it is, bitch. So I was thinking of a shirt, man, that y'all could probably use two hands and chains like that and say three hundred years. Mm. Okay, so now you design shirts too. Okay, I'm okay. just saying, bro. Just, okay, that's gonna be the mogul Flores humble brand shirt. Okay. You know All what right. I'm saying? Well, just add that to the list. I just mean, copyrighted trademark here at Mogul Media Studios by Mogul News <laughs> only. By the it. So long as I, bro, let me get my credit, man. Okay. Hey. Next question. And this this probably be the last one. Who yells the most? Meek Mill or Samuel L. Jackson? Uh, that's easy. That's Meek Mill. You think Meek Mill yell way more way than Samuel L. Jackson? Way more. Shit, I feel like Meek Mill probably only yell in the studio. Nah, probably Meek Mill probably yell all the time. God damn. Okay, I give you that one. So here it is, man. So I see that you be doing your thing, club promotion and all that, man. Tell us a little bit, a, a little bit background on that, man. How did you get into the club promotion and all of that? Uh, well, actually, it was a, a friend of mine that worked at uh, Nation Star. Okay. Um, his name is Eric Grayson. You know, what I'm saying shout out to Crown Holders Eleven. No doubt. Um. So uh, I seen them around. They were actually throwing parties there, and they were actually throwing, you know, kind of like little work events and stuff like yeah. that. And uh, I didn't know him at the time, but everybody would be like, "Hey, are you going uh, to their party?" And I'm like, and they was like, "Man, you not cool with E Grayson? You not cool with E Grayson?" I'm like, "Shit, nigga, is E Grayson cool with me?" You right. know what I'm saying? And so um, what happened was I ended up running into him at my barbershop. Okay. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, what you doing here at the barbershop? Because the barbershop is in the hood at Oak Cliff, uh, where he's from. So I'm, I'm like, nigga, what you doing in the barbershop? Nigga, this, you know what I'm saying? This is my shit. He like, nigga, this is my barbershop. He's like, the nigga been cutting my hair since I, you know, I went to school with him. I'm like, okay, I'll let you get away with okay. that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and shit. Ever since then, niggas just started kicking in and, and vibing more and, Shit, all of a sudden, that nigga was like, shit, let's, let's just do the parties together. Okay, Because he's saying, you know what I'm saying, I knew a lot of people, too. 
He was like, shit, if you want to do the party, shit, we can do them, so. So how hard is it? I mean, it's because it seems like it's a, a lot of promoters out here, a lot of people trying to do parties. What sets people uh, apart? What makes a, pro- a promoter more successful than another? Or, um, what, or what sets crown holders differently from others? I, w- I would say just crown holders is different just because we have a – like a real, real like grassroots campaign. Okay. So it's like you know, a lot of the people that that fuck with us, that fuck with us, like they truly do. They've been fuck with us since day one, or they have like some type of genuine connection to us. Like we ain't, we don't, you know, what I'm saying we don't think we too good for nothing. Like you can still hit us up. Like all our people we fuck with in some some way or another fashion, or you know, what I'm saying it's really that connection and the experience that you give people, as far as them knowing you and coming out to your event. So and like, you fuck with them when they have some too. So, so do y'all too. have like a target audience? Like, do is it more so just kind of grown and sexy, dressed to impress? Like, what's y'all like, or is it target or just based on the event? It's just based on the event. So I was, I would say our target demographic is are obviously probably, uh, you know, blacks from you know that young professional probably from yeah. twenty four to thirty five. That's uh, you know, that's looking to unwind, that's come from their job, that's yeah. that's educated. And I mean you wanna do some ratchet shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's but what you I mean. but you wanna do some ratchet shit with other, you know, ratchetly educated people. Okay. So that, that's kind of, you know what I'm saying, what we provide. So Okay, so like right now, do y'all have like a particular venue that y'all operating out of? Or how do y'all go about y'all where can they find a crown holder party? Right now, yeah, yeah. Um, they actually probably been going to them for years. Uh, we do Wednesday nights. We do them at Gator, so we yeah. do Wednesday. Um, I'm sure y'all all know about the Epic Wednesday that goes up each the and every Wednesday. Um, and we have five dollar daiquiris, fifty cent wings. So um, and on the on the ones and twos, we got DJ Trio, we got DJ Fife. Okay, uh, they're pretty well right now. Fridays, we just currently opened up a new spot at Taboo Lounge, um, and that's where we're doing. We're actually doing a spin with that one. So. Uh, a lot of times you have live music spots, okay. and you think of live music, you think of, you know, like older people, yeah. you know, your auntie, you know what I'm saying, your uncle in there slobbing each other down yeah. with the Hennessy. But we're trying to put a new spin on that. We want to do live music for our age. So, if, you know what I'm saying, if you got your, your lady, y'all ain't really trying to step into into the club club yeah, yeah. where everybody, you know what I'm saying, what's up, you know, all the bitches and hoes, but you're trying to hear some, you know, just a live band, you know what I'm saying, just something different. So, uh, that's what we just started uh, here with Taboo Lounge. So, they do that. We do that from 8 to 11, okay. and then from, uh, like, uh, 11 to 2, then that's where you hear the DJ set. You know what? That's you know what. Now that I think about it, I've never been to a, like a live band at a, a club that played live music and yeah. they played more of our music. You and know it, it's it's a lot of dope ass singers that's that's here in the city. So trying to get them like a place to you know what I'm saying just to come to and you just hear some because I think I don't I think singing is one of those things that never gets old. Yeah, that's true. Like hearing somebody blow with some live instruments, live bands, and I mean of course you got the the studio, so you know how. Just instrument on the instrumentation it's very level. Rare when how you get they, a nice singer in the studio. I'm gonna be honest. It'd yeah. be like you know the auditions on American Idol yeah. when like 90 percent of them be trash. Mm. Yeah, it'd be the same way, bro. But no, no doubt. Like I was talking to um, I don't know, you know Jay Hayes. I don't think I know. Him. Okay, they they're party promoters too. But I, I went. What's to, the name of that group? Uh, Villains. Villains. What? Well, uh, they do uh, right now. They do. He would miss the hit down. Oh, they do rumors or something yeah, like rumors. that? Oh, okay, okay. And, you know, I had a good time because it was, like, just straight all the way ratchet. Like, all the way ratchet. You know yeah, what if I'm you saying? was at rumors, that was ratchet. That was, that was like going it up. It was so ratchet that if I would have been there about two more minutes, I would have got a ringworm. Mm. It was that ratchet, bro. Mm. And but I, it's a good I time in that it. motherfucker. I think Dip is a DJ there. Yep. Shout out to DJ Dip. was my homie, too. I loved it. It, it was amazing. DJ, Dip probably had that whole rocking. And Dip, and Dip is that DJ that's going to play... All the hood shit that you yep. got in your car that you ain't know nobody else was listening to, yep. you like nigga. Yeah. How did you know that was my song? But you know what's crazy? Like even going to like the hood club and even going to like status, you know what I'm saying? It's like what I was talking to Jay Hayes is like what I noticed is, bro, they never play that slow jam no more. You know, like you got like the ass shaking music. You know what I'm saying? You got them Billboard top forty bounce tunes. But you know that one song with that chick you been eyeing the whole night, and this that is you your can chance for yeah. It's but you, but you gotta think too. It's really yo age. The person that I'm trying to entertain, it's not our age no more. That's true. So that they're really trying to entertain that person from probably 22 to 27. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the person that they gotta really entertain those club fillers, those people that's coming in, because it's more of them than it is of you. 
So they don't want to hear no club shit. They either been drinking, their hormones is going, they trying to fuck a bitch. Or they, you know what I'm saying? They trying to hear that, that boppity bop, whatever they've been hearing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What they really want to hear. So that, that's that's more what that is, too. So right now, man, what's what's in your playlist? Like, what you rocking with? I see you be getting your, your fitness on, getting your workout on and stuff, man. Like, workout music. What do you listen to when you work out? Workout music. Uh, I'm a big young dog fan, so. Right with dog. Uh, I got a cold ass young dolphin. It's um, Yo Gotti, yep. of course. Anything Memphis, O three six, Boosie, Webby. Um, of course, those guys. Those guys always are really good to get you through a workout okay. set. Um, and what's probably in my playlist that I can't stop taking out is the Nipsey. Okay, Nipsey, cool, bro. You know what? I try. I listen through it. Whoa, Nipsey's cool, bro. He cool, bro. I ride with Nipsey, man. Mm. I, I listen to it. And I thought the album was dope, but I don't know, man. I, I just can't never get into it. I try every time. And I mm. really try hard. I mm. really try very, very hard. I don't know. I just, I don't know, man. Like, I... I don't know how you couldn't be feeling Nipsey, man. I mean, he's just got so many impactful lyrics. I think I think it's dope. I I mean, it just doesn't have replay value for me. No, like, when I listened to it, I was like, okay, it's a cool album. You don't even, like, hustle to motivate? Like, you don't, like... No, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying, I don't know, for me, it doesn't have a strong replay value for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's definitely wow. would be a, a workout album for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm riding in the carbs, I bet I'm going to throw on Nipsey. And I'm riding, I, I can ride to it. I can't work out to so it. So, I'm, I'm interested, like, I mean, because you said so many um, blasphemy things today. Okay. Uh, you know, now it's time for, for the interviewee to become the interviewer. Okay. So, I mean, what things are you listening to? Okay. Uh, what what whole... Now, are you still... And I have to ask you, too. Are you still going by Big D these days? Because you're not big anymore. Uh, so, yes, the mogul. So, the mogul. Okay, okay, you like to be addressed as the mogul. Yeah, man. So, n- niggas not at BG no more. They changed their <laughs> names and shit. <laughs> niggas used to call them Big D. I just want y'all to know that, so... Yeah, man. They still... You know, people still call you Big D, bro. You know, I... I get approached more now that I look like a football And now player. that I think about it, I'm not going to call you Big D. That's, 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 yes. um, yeah. that's cool, bro. You call now me that I think about it. Yeah. You call me Derek. Yeah, I'm... Rufus, we're going to go by <laughs> real names today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, we got some uncle names. You know what I'm saying? But no, like right now I'm listening to, shout out to Yachty Lil Boat too. That joint rocking. Mm. But that, that boom song go hard. Like, But on the last episode, that sound just like go yayo joint, but... I listen to that a little bit. I've been, I've been riding to that. Okay, what was the besides that? What was the the last album that you like? Was like, damn, I can't, I can't take this out. I got a couple. Four, four, four. Okay, that joint was rocking. I, don't, I mean, I don't really think that was Jay Z's best work. I think it was just. I, eh. I think it was. Charlamagne said all the time. I thought it was just like good adult contemporary hip hop. It was. I, I give. I give him that. It was just like a good refresher. Like, okay. I can, I can get that. You know what I'm saying? So that had, but I, you know what? I take it back. I mean, well, I don't take it back, but when I listen to the song, I don't listen to it all the way through. It's a couple of songs. So I absolutely kind of skip through. Okay. Um, what else I listen to? Mixtape that I like is Ashley T. Grizzly, um, that Blood is. Um, the one with him and um, is that Lil, Dirt? Lil Dirt? Yeah, Lil Dirt. They got some bangers on it. But then when it gets to all that auto tune singing, um, I, I, I'm a fan of T Grizzly. Do you like T Grizzly's first album? What do you think about his first album? I thought that joint rock. You thought I enjoyed it, and maybe because I'm biased because I'm from Detroit. But not only am I from no, Detroit, I, I but thought, I'm from Joy Road. I, I thought it was pretty amazing. I, I rock. I was in Europe. I was. I'm just trying to find some something that we like because I mean we we was off. We was I off. No, nah, I ain't saying I didn't like Nipsey Hussle. I just for me ain't have strong replay value. Uh, who else do I listen to? Um, I, the only thing I didn't like about the the T Grizzly album, the one that he the the Blooders, I mean the Blooders, yeah. Uh, I didn't like Lil Durk on there. I don't like Lil Durk with him. Okay. Like I I I, t- I take T Grizzly with like somebody else that like a money bag yo or like a, a Dolph. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily want to hear him with with Durk because Durk kind of have his own line with his auto tune and he yeah. do a little singing. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really want to hear Grizzly. I, I want to hear T Grizzly give me some. You know what I'm saying? Some front of the heart. Some, mm, okay. Mm, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Hit, yeah. So I, I, I like I like him give me some some heart shit. I tell you the I, I tell you the album I probably played the most last year out of everything was Bruno Mars, Twenty Four Karat Gold. Yeah, I, I mean that I was pretty amazing. With that, sonically the whole time, uh, hip hop, 
I'm trying to think what else that came out. What's some albums that came out last year? That um, was it? I think Kendrick. Migos, Culture Life 2, Culture that, 2. Oh, yeah, that, that came out earlier this year. That came out this year. Been, I, I, I work out to a lot of the Migos stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can go with that. Um, that Black. I liked um I'm a huge Big Crit fan too, so I love with Big Crit. I liked his last album. I was really proud of him for doing that. Because he hadn't had a a good album up until this point. Yeah. So I, I was real proud of him for that. Th- that joint was dope. You know what? And I got put on Big Crit late, but when I heard that with that that one of his old songs was that Mount Olympus, is that what it's called? Mm. He was just like snapped and that's what kind of drew. Oh uh, yeah, you yeah, was like I, I was like, damn, bro. And then like I've been on him like literally since I like that next year after I left BG. Damn. I didn't know he was around that long. Where, where Big Crit from? He from? He from Mississippi. Mississippi. Meridian. Same place from Ray Schremer. Nah, they from Tupelo. Well, I'm telling you, they Mississippi. You know, you forget them. You automatically assume when you hear, like, Big Crit, like, oh, he going to be from Atlanta. I automatically assume that Ray Schremer will be from Atlanta. Like, that's what that's what you up north niggas say. I mean, <laughs> you don't realize that when you're up north, everybody Yo, country. Niggas up north, man. Everybody's. Up north, everybody sound country, but now I've been in the south for for a while. I realize like it's different southern. It's diff- yeah, it's different. It's different lingo. Yeah, because I, I hear your Memphis, and then I was in South Georgia, almost like I'm Florida when I was living in America. Ah, uh, them niggas don't complete no sentences. Hey man, chopping them up. Hey cool, I'll be right back. Like what? Hey cool, meet me at the hood house. The what? The fuck is the hood house? And then yeah. shit was huddle house. I said, God damn, you made a shorter and shorter man. But let me see. I'm trying to think of who else out here that's rocking, music-wise, that I, I listen to. I didn't like the new Frank Ocean. I don't even think I heard it. He couldn't. I mean, I knew it was going to be better than the last one. Yeah, I, I really wasn't rocking with that one. I'm trying to think it was something else that um, uh, that I that I really liked. I said it was the Big Crit. Uh, who's, your, who's your favorite rapper? That's kind of tough. Like, of all time? Like, right now, who's your favorite rapper, like, your go-to if nigga said you had to go to an album, I'm only giving you this one rapper that you can listen to all the time. Rick Ross. Rick Ross, I feel like for me, man, Rick Ross, I could put him on and get me prepared for any mood. You know what I'm saying? If I if I need something heavy and hard while I'm in What's the What's your gym, favorite Rick Ross album? Mm, I know this is where we're going to differ. Is it Teflon Don? Which one? Yeah, that's, that's my joint. Teflon Don. I like, I think the one before that is his best work there. Was uh, that Port of Miami? No. Nah. Uh, uh Mafia. Was it? it was like um Nah, that's not Triller. It was the one after Triller though. Cause he had that Port of Miami, Triller. Then he had uh the one where he's going at fifty cent on there. Uh I know what you're talking about. And then about. he had the one with Dream, All the nigga really wanted you. It was Teflon nigga Dunn really Dunn wanted you. On. Nah, that that ain't Teflon. Teflon Dunn came after that. Um He had um the first song he had the the mafia song. Uh, then he was he was going at Fifty Cent. That nah, that beef was dope. Let me see. You had Rather You Than Me, Rich Father, Port of Miami. Uh, let me go back. Port of Miami was heavy though. Let me see. Uh, I can't think of uh, uh, deeper than rap. Deeper than rap. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, that joint went dope. Deeper than deeper than rap was his best thing. Let me see what singles on. Cause there. I, I I like him over uh like old school melodic beats and he did a lot of that on that. Yeah. Album. Like when he just started spitting, like all right, I, I I love Rick Ross when he do that. I don't necessarily like the, the the hype shit. Even though he got some good hype songs, I would prefer. I just like to hear a nigga get a beat like and rap, kind of like how he did with on Teflon Don with the uh, the uh, Raphael Sadiq song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like beats like that. And then um, the one he got with CeeLo on there, The yep. Tears of Joy. Like, I, I would say those two albums are, for me, Rick Ross's best work. I, I rock with Rick. I, I just feel like, man, just he, he put together something for, I feel like music should be emotional. And if your song can tie into that emotion, I think it's dope. Like in the gym, that, that hard joints come on, it made me tap into that mental state. If I'm mm-hmm. about to go out, you put on Rick Ross, it's just like, damn, bro feel bossed up. I feel like I'm going to give me a nice glass of scotch, a cigar. I'm gonna, I feel clean. Carl cleaned up, man. That's I rock with Rick Ross. So I would think that would be my go-to. I think uh, for me, my favorite my favorite rap artist is, uh, is Currency. Okay. Currency go hard. Yeah. I, I think just overall body of work and just quality of the work. Yeah. Like, he's always dropping some shit, yeah. but it's always quality. 
So who you feel like is most underrated? I would say him. I would say currency. Like he still, he gets no radio play, but he packs out everywhere he goes. I, don't, I feel like you don't need radio no more. I think nah. radio is just one of those nostalgic feelings of. It, it's one of those things that you always want to do and hear. Yeah, is uh, to hear your joint. But on the radio, ra- radio is kind of like the biggest whore out now. Yeah. So like they they always jump on whatever swag or whatever this, but they jump on it late because they don't want to spend time, you know, fishing. We'll just wait to the to it bubble up, and then it's easy to catch it once it bubble up. But see, you know, the radio man, it's all paid. Like for example, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's that's it too. It's a business up, too. I went up to 97.9 to be shout out to J. Cruz and uh, DJ Elusive, and I was in a DJ Elusive was in the mix. So you know, I'm up there chilling while he's scratching in the mix and all that. And he had a sheet of paper with a list of songs on it. Oh yeah, because those are the most like requested songs or. The songs that motherfuckers want to hear. Yeah, so is he because he was like he get this list. If he derailed from this list, he'd get he fired. Pe- yeah, he get he get penalized. So it was like, damn. He was like, what it is is that I people artists when you hear people like they get that iHeart Radio stimulus package or that yeah. Radio One stimulus because they want to boost. They gotta pay. They pay so much money to get that, that so album spins, in rotation. Yep, man. He was like, bro, you can't break it. So I was like, damn. With a radio, that's why you hear the same eight songs over and over again, and that's why you can't hear any. You know, saying any. Other Quite music yeah, or yeah, currency. Yeah. So any local music you listen to out here in Dallas, man? Are you in tune with any of the, the hip-hop scene here? Uh, I mean, we always do, you know, club stuff. So we always have a lot of local artists come, like Mo3. Okay. I love uh, Yellow Beezy, though. Yeah, he doing this thing, bro. He's having a hell Yellow of a year. I love Yellow I mean, and I was on him, like, when we did, we used to do this club called Red Jacket, uh, uh, Red DJ, Jacket. DJ Q used to be the DJ. And DJ Q going to put you up on all... Uh, that nigga goes hard. Yeah. Um, so even when he had that um, that trapping the that trapping designer, before he had that, he had the song I could never get out of my head. It was that uh, last night I started out with yeah. two beaches. Yeah. Last night I used to like that one. Then when he came out with that trapping designer, I still don't feel like trapping designer blew up as much as I wanted to. But that whole that whole it's went on hard. his way. And but it's, that's on me though. That shit go hard. That shit fire. He he doing his thing, man. I I to me in my opinion between Mo three and Yellow Beezy. Honestly, I think Mo Three is more talented. He, I mean, he, he just he he uh he sings more than him. Yeah. So that's why he uh you know what I'm saying. But I feel like if you see who looked like the superstar in the room, Yellow Beezy definitely to me got that that star power. Behind yeah, Yellow him. be doing it. I mean, Yellow got some knocking ass singles too. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, uh, I even uh, Trap Boy Freddie, he got some good yeah. shit. Um, it's a it's a couple people that's out that's out there that's doing their thing and that's staying consistent. I think Dallas is possibly on his way i feel like i hate the i hate when people like man the city just need to come together but i really feel like dallas hate a lot on their own people bad i mean bad like it's sad to say man but i do see some people rallying i'm seeing like people like okay people starting to get the attention here like you seeing yellow beezy be with little baby and you seeing with all these cats now but that's i think too the thing is so many people be because you got so many people here so you got so many people that's trying to do it and make that one song when they not just concerned about putting bodies of work together yeah so like when you see cats like uh because i always talk about that like because you you know say so like memphis is blowing up yeah so i mean but it's still the same i mean we got so many people but it's still like them people that have bodies of work yeah. and they've been putting in work and they've been grinding you know what i'm saying so i think that's why a lot of people be be bubbling too so what did you think being from memphis um what did you think about that that young dolph it well it's still going on that young dolph and yo Gotti b i mean it, it wasn't new to anybody that's been in the city they've been beefing for a long time yeah yeah it, it seemed like um, the young Dolph moving a little bit different now that he got shot. You know, so I remember when they did that first attempt, and he was kind of more like puffed up, like yeah, you know what I'm saying. This time it seemed like it's a little bit more humble. I don't know. I you mean, know maybe bullets will do that to you. I don't know. Yeah, that's the heat, man. But y'all got some, y'all got some. What is money? Money bag yo from Memphis too, right? So mm-hmm. you got him, you got Gotti, you got Dolph, you got uh, who else? Y'all got Black Youngster from there. Damn, y'all got some for real heavy hitters coming out of Memphis. Yeah, Black, right Black Boy, uh, Don Trip, um, Black Boy, the one that got the Look Alive song with Drake. Okay. Um, and he, he did a little dance to shoot dance. Man, you know what? I'm going to have to go check out some um, Memphis music, man. Like, y'all, I, I thought Go Yayo, I mean, Go Yayo, goddamn, Moneybag Yo, 
I think it looked like him and T Grizzly might be working on the joint tape right now. They should. The actual the money bag yo and um who did he do a tape with? Uh, Lil Baby. Okay. Lil 38 Baby. Uh that all went hard though too though. Hey, you know what? I didn't check that one out. Ah man, you gotta check that one out. Okay, okay. So you, they, you fuck with 38 Baby? I've Lil never Baby? heard of him. Yeah, NBA, well, NBA Young Boy, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know what? I I really haven't heard too much of his music. I guess I see more of his what he getting in trouble for uh, more than anything. Nah, he, he he got some songs. He kind of like a yeah, – I don't know because you're from up north, so a lot of times it took y'all a while to get to all the boosts. They going to quit shooting them slugs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, you know it take y'all a minute. So, But, you know, he kind of puts you in that mind frame of a young boosie, like a young boosie for real. I mean, I feel it. I mean, I guess they them niggas sound alike. I mean, well, he don't got the same high voice as Boosie, but Bad Rouge got some people coming out of there. That's where NBA Young Boy from, right? Mm-hmm. So from Bad Rouge. So, man, like, um, who's your least favorite rapper? Somebody, like, when they come on, you'd be like, bro, absolutely can't stand. You know, i tell you who used to be my least favorite rapper, but I actually started fucking with him. Motherfucking Ace Hood. Okay. I used to think Ace Hood was fucking terrible. <laughs> I was like, why is this nigga signed? And then he did an interview on Breakfast Club where he kind of talked about him leaving Cali. Yeah. And like, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like really entered. So you got to know him. Yeah. And he was talking about how he be on his working out shit, how he be on his eating shit. And I was like, I'm going to go fuck with this nigga. And I went and fuck with his music. That shit was going hard. It sound different now. Bruh. Trust the process. Yeah, that trust the process is going hard. I'm fucking with that trust the process. My least favorite. They <laughs> are. My least favorite. And... You run into any of my teammates from Bowling Green, they knew if they put this CD in, I was breaking it. I could not stand Cameron. Really? I could not, bro. When he got to all that, like, the old boy songs, those joints was rocking. I was cool. I was rocking. Cam, can, Cam can get a little redundant. He'll be like, it's, it's that Jiffy Tiffy. Yeah, It's man. that Taffy Laffy. Poofy the I'll- Poofy. <laughs> had a dog named Snoopy. I was up in the studio. Now I'm up in here recording. Yeah, bro. That joint used to kill me. He'd be they, like, when it rains, it's pouring. I guess I'm soaking wet. <laughs> You'd be like, whoa. <laughs> that, that's probably You'd be like, what, what the fuck am I listening to here? But then my nigga got some songs, though, too. So, I mean, like the one we first got on uh, Rockefeller. Yeah. Nah, that, that CD goes hard no, yeah. with the old boy. Like, So, Cam got some shit. What's, what's your Purple most Haze? disappointing album this year that you listened to? This year... Or maybe last year. Oh, last year, yeah. I think uh, I expected just a tad bit more from Yo Gotti's Art of the Hustle. Okay. Is that what song was? What is that? The that that one song? What's the one song they was playing all the time last year? I um, think he had down it, to the down. Was it? I, was run it, it down? Up? Is that run it up? Fuck it it wasn't down it in the DM. Uh, yeah, yeah it that's, was that song, yeah. the one with him and Nicki Minaj. Yeah. That was under. To me, the most disappointing. I'm not surprised, but still the most disappointing album of, of 2017 for me was Eminem. Oh, I, you a Detroit? Uh, you a, that's y'all look up north. That's y'all look y'all look savior right there. Y'all love that bro. little white boy, boy. I tell you, man, <laughs> hey, <bro. laughs> he can't that do no wrong. Joint. Yeah, he could this time because it's zero replay value. Yeah, at, and I'm not a big. I don't know how y'all be listening to Eminem, bro. Bro, he, he don't do it. Got so he's dark good. and aggressive. He's like. he's cool, you know. I, I I fuck with him, but I mean, I'm not. He's not getting any play in my car. Oh, shit, I feel you, bro. If I'm if I'm listening to him, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm going well, back y'all to Detroit. Slim Shady. Y'all love him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we go. My yeah, roommate was from him. Detroit. He'd be like, "No, nah, nigga, we about to listen to Eminem." I'm like, "Okay, bro." You know, you can't. Down south, man, it took me a long time to get on y'all music. For the long time, y'all was always singing on y'all tracks, and it sounded like church music. Warner be a baller, shot caller. Sound like somebody, pastor, deacon, got in the booth and got on some street shit. Have you listened to that shit that came out of Detroit? That Blade, Icewood, the Cheddar Boys. That shit sound like a, a nigga made them little beats in the, in the closet. And all the Detroit, all the Detroit beats sound the same though. And now they rock it, cause T Grizzly beats all sound exactly. What's the same nigga that that make all y'all shit? Hell of a make this beat. Yeah, right. yeah that nigga make all rocking. the niggas in Detroit beats. Hey, bro, you can't say it's rocking. Everybody be waiting for them boys to drop. Man, please. Man, down south, everything was like I had to get used to 808s. 
it was just like boom, 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 and niggas sing. Yeah, if, nigga, if you can't ride that beat, we don't want to hear it. That's Man. y'all. The, that's a problem. Y'all got so caught up in the lyrics and trying to battle rap niggas that y'all forgot it was a motherfucking song. Nigga, I want to sing along. Yeah, man, but I want to hear that damn. battle rap shit. I don't give a fuck because you, you can rap better than nigga. Nigga, hell, I'm trying, I'm going through some. Then it was like getting used to y'all axes. Niggas sound like they had peanut butter stuck in the top of their mouth. Hey, cool. Ugh. We rap on this. It's just how they sound Bro, just man, for a long time. Just because y'all niggas is proper and we're not because y'all pronounce all y'all little words. I'm just saying. That don't, you know. You not bad as Atlanta. Like you said words and I heard the S. Well, I'm I'm talking to you like that because you're not. If you were probably from Memphis, then I I do change my dialect. Let, let me hear the the the, the Memphis dialect. Uh, I'll have to talk to somebody because it'll just naturally come out. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call Melvin. And then because <laughs> he's probably by far <laughs> Big D. He had the most countryest twang ever. Now now Melvin is. I mean, and we literally went to school like ten minutes away from each other. But that nigga definitely has. He's definitely country. It didn't, he didn't sound like he grew up in the city. It really sounded like he grew up on the farm. Like he was that like that twang. But he just draws out all his words. Yeah, man. So, bro, right now, what's the big plan for for uh, Flores this year, man? Anything on the horizon? I know y'all. I seen a couple of NFL players had this shirt on or. Of professional athletes, was didn't I see that? Did I make that up? Um, I don't, th- I don't think you might be talking about last year when we had yeah. Draymond. Draymond oh, liked yeah. the shirt. Seen that? That was dope, man. How did that come about? Uh, actually, it was a BG connection. Uh, Nick, uh, he actually works for uh, Draymond right now. He's okay. his business manager. Wow, that's dope. Uh, so. Uh, when when they had the finals going on, he hit us up. Well, we, I always talk to Nick. He like one of my best friends. Yeah. So. Um, when he had the uh, the finals, they had like I think it was like right after game four, game three, because they won game three. And so right after game three, he hit us up and was like, he was like, man, Dre got an idea for a shirt, and he was like, um, I want to know, you know what I'm saying? I want you to help me with it or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so he told me what the idea was, which is like take the, you know, make the quick and long thing or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so shit, we gave it to, uh, we told Ike about it, and uh, you know Ike from Cleveland, yeah. so. That nigga felt a little conflicted. At, <laughs> that nigga felt a little conflicted at first, and I'm like, nigga, you gotta get this money. Um, so shit, we uh, made the design for him, sent it back to him, and shit. That nigga was like, all right, cool, I'm fucking with it. I want to buy it from y'all. So once he did that, uh, then that's when that's when we set up the licensing deal with him. That's dope. And um, after we set up the licensing deal, we was able to get him in like two or three stores out there in Oakland too. Okay. So what's the process as far as is? Are, is your goal for the te- all your shirts to get into a store? Is it more internet marketing that you feel like that's the wave of the future anyway? What's, how, what are y'all doing with the merchandise right now? Um, I mean, our, our, our goal isn't just to, to be in a store. Like, for us, the store doesn't really make sense. Okay. Because, I mean, got I mean, be honest, we got a lot of woke shit. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I mean, and I don't necessarily like, because, I mean, it's just like the music business. So, I don't like a retailer selling my stuff when I couldn't get it to them myself. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, they're going to dip into your pockets just with anything else. They might go to a broader a mass of people, but I'm just more one of them people, like, I just go to wherever the people are. So I'm always traveling. Probably like a week ago, I was just in Houston for some pop-ups. So I just go wherever I know my demographic of people are, and I just give it out. So I've just been seeing a big-ass buzz from there. And I mean, I'm not looking for anything overnight. It's just Absolutely. steadily, you know what I'm saying? Just steady growth. The slow roll. So I see you got our alma mater on, and I seen a partnership <laughs> that you did with Bowling Green. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah. We did that. A little bit about that. How'd that come about? Um, actually, I had, it was something I always kind of wanted to do. Um, and so I just went back and we actually talked to the athletic director. I think Kit Hughes is like the assistant athletic director. And he told us like what the process looked like. Okay. Uh, so we reached out to their um, company that handles licensing. Okay. Um, and then they gave us the form. It was uh, very intense. Uh, but I think, you know what I'm saying, it was actually well worth it. So just to get that partnership with them and be on that, uh, that level. So that's a definitely a dope look, man. It's just seeing guys, man, that, you know, us going and we were young men in school, man, just yeah, trying to find I, our I way. I feel like when we went to BG, like, you never saw, like, I saw it out of the, like, BG didn't teach you how to get here or to own your own studio or that you would even, it taught you how to go to be a teacher, be an accountant. Yep. Like, it never, like, they say dream big, but they really wasn't telling niggas to dream big. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that was kind of my, my thing about it. I just want to show people that, 
the people that, I mean the black people that are there now because it's, it's a lot of them there but just showing them hey you ain't got to get caught up in what everybody or what you think you should do like whatever your passion is or whatever you're creative about like just do that shit like do that shit while you're young so well, you ain't got to be like us to to go work at a mortgage company and figure out like man this shit ain't really for me absolutely you know what i'm saying and just yep. to go through that and then get to where you want to go like so when you look at like if you got a, a young kid especially a young black kid or a young you know black boy a young black girl and they look into getting into fashion and get into designing their own own clothing line what are some tips that you would give them to get to where you are at this point um i would just say do that shit like stop Stop asking, you know, like stop asking people how you do this, how you do that. If you're really passionate about it, like it's just gonna come out. And when you do it, and if you're consistent about it, like just so many opportunities open up for you. I mean, I'm sure you see that just yeah, with the music. Like now you're consistent, you created your own lane. It's yep. crazy. And especially here, it seems like nobody wants to help you when you get here. Yep. And then once you start, all right, I'm gonna make my own shit or I'm gonna do my own thing. Then once you start doing that, all those same people that say they weren't gonna fuck with you, they like, hey, you yeah. know, I'm trying to fuck with you. You don't remember? You know what yeah, I'm saying? You like no doubt. That shit crazy. So I would just tell them, man, just do that shit. Like I'm just one of those people fail fast, fail hard. Like, cause the best thing you could do is learn from experience. So with with the the brand again, Humble Flourish brand, is there anything out there that you would want our listeners to know about the brand before we, you know, wrap everything up? Uh, I mean, just keep in mind that we artists, and you know, we we sensitive about our shit. So uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Again, man, let everybody know the, where you can find the, um, the brand and everything like that. Uh, you can find us online. You can find us at www.humbleflourishbrand.com. And again, you can go through there, search through all the products that we got. We got like over 30 products. Um, and then if you see something that you do like, you do want to cop, you do want to fuck with, you want to support us, um, go ahead and, you know, Put, add that to your cart hit that uh, shipping as the as the discount code so that way I can pay for that you can get some dope gear and you can support us okay and then where can people find you on your social media handle? now you can you can find me you know you don't have to go through nobody you can get directly to your boy um, at, at on Instagram is at Rufus W one two six now that's gonna get you right to me okay and before I get get off bro you know I, I'm gonna be honest. One, I don't really rock with crown holders like that, and I meant to say this. Oh, okay. I've been trying to get on the flyer for a long time. <laughs> I I'm like, to, tell us how you feel, then. <laughs> I, I, I talked to Dominique and I talked to Leron weekly. I have a meeting at their desk, and they just lied to me, bro. They was like, mm. Dominique was like, yeah, bro, we are gonna talk about it in the meeting this week. He been telling me that since like November of 2015. Mm. I mean, you've been knowing me longer. You ain't even told me. You know what I'm saying? I bro, didn't even you know. I didn't want to pull that power move, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, but to, we go way back, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to start doing that, bro. And then, like, I mean, then, just let us know. my beef with you, bro, I didn't even get invited to a root holiday. This man got his own holiday that he mm -hmm. turned up. I and mean. And sure did he didn't even get an invite. I mean, I didn't. I didn't know you wanted to come. I mean, you. You know, you built such a, 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 a empire here. So I mean, I didn't know if you know if Death Row was coming out. You know what I'm saying? So me and my wife got into an argument. I was sitting. There, I was hating on. Oh, I said, I hope them niggas don't have no fun. <laughs> I, said, I, I mean, you definitely could have just pulled up. It was on Instagram, like. Hey, bro, we used to hang out in the union together, and that nigga, can't, I can't come to his birthday party. Bro, you definitely could have pulled up. I mean, you had three opportunities, bro. I'm gonna be at this one this year. When is your birthday again? Uh, you you definitely missed it, but uh -huh. it, um, you know if you if you stick or if, you know if you pay attention, though, it's gonna come at the same time it did last year. When was it that last year again? <laughs> January. Oh damn, I got. Yeah, bro, I'm gonna be at the next. When, one, when your birthday? So we August can try. twenty six. Okay, we can try and get you out. We go. Yeah, we are gonna have a mogul holiday. I gotta come up with a cool name. Rue holiday is dope. Yeah, I, I think dope. so. I need to call it something. But, man, hey, bro, I appreciate you for coming oh, no through, problem, rocking bro. through with me. Hey, this is Conclude Mogul Moves Only Podcast with your boy Big D, the mogul, a.k.a. Shook Diddy. Wakanda AKA, forever. A, hey, we in there. Zamunda. What is, what is a Z. That's where I'm at. I got my guy Rufus in the building, man. We out. I need a meal a day. Got to make me a meal a day. See, money it coming, then money it go. If I got me a meal and make my mama, she hit up my line and she say, baby, I got some bills to pay. So I need a meal a day. Gotta make me a meal a day. I need a meal a day. Gotta make me a meal a day. See, money it coming.
the money it go If I got me a meal to make My mama she hit on my line and she say Baby I got some bills to pay So I need a meal a day Gotta give me a meal a day